We're gonna start off with all of this generic stuff. We're not gonna need any of this, so just go ahead and delete it. <laughs> We're gonna make our own for our emote. Alright, and we can also delete our sketch. Ordinarily, I will say you gotta do your mesh manually, but because this is an emote, it's not gonna it's not gonna matter too much. You can just auto <laughs> just select everything, you gotta click on auto and just put everything on standard for now. Cause um it's not gonna matter too much. Um so I'm gonna keep the background layers for now. And we don't need to worry too much about draw order on an emote because um, we're not going to have anything changing layers. So let's go back to our references. So I like this one because we have like the little focus mode, scribble scribble, and then up to a nod. This one has like the little scribble scribble and then up to a nod, a bit, a bit more pronounced. So our main thing is going to be our notebook coming up towards our face, the scribbling motion, our face coming down, and also the nodding motion. We really gotta break it down into what we want to move. So first thing we're gonna do is you're gonna see that there is this deformer menu, and this is gonna have all of our parts. Are we gonna go ahead and organize this a little bit first? So I'm gonna grab all of our parts that are on our head first. We're gonna hold control and then click all the things that we want like that so this should be our entire head and we're going to press this button up here which is going to create a warp deformer we're just going to name this taller head so this is going to create a new warp and this is um how we basically manipulate things in live 2d because we can move this and you can see wah! <laughs> but it's also useful for organizing things in our deformer menu. Before we do anything else, we want to hold Control and Alt, grab the corner of our red box, and we're just gonna make this bigger so that we can fit things on the inside. We're gonna do the same thing with our other folders, so our notebook and also our body. There we go. So now you'll see that we have things a little bit more organized into the three main parts. Let's go ahead and start with our head nodding. We want to make our notebook less visible so that we can see what we're doing. So we're going to go ahead and select all our notebook parts and lower the opacity down. That's on the inspector menu. Uh, let's put this at about 40. So we need to think about all the motions that we want to happen. First of all, we want our mouth to open at one point, so we're going to make one which is called Mouth Open. Make sure to set the ID to. Let me explain the ranges just a little bit. So you'll see that this one has a minimum, default and maximum. These are going to be the numbers on our parameter. For our Mouth Open, we're going to keep the range at zero minimum, zero default and one maximum. Because we have two states, we have the default state of zero where the mouth is closed, and then the maximum state of one, which is where the mouth is open. You may notice in some cases that you would have the minimum at minus one. For example, when we have a hair sway, it's left minus one and then right one. So it really depends on what you're using the parameter for. So for the mouth, we're mostly going to be using our lower lip. We're actually going to need to redo the mesh here for this specific part. So go ahead and click the manual mesh edit. It's going to bring this up. We want to erase this and then grab our little line tool here. Draw oh, around here. And we're going to fit this to our lip. You'll see in our little tool details, if you scroll down, we need to decrease the density and also the mesh width and then turn the two into a three so it should look like this uh, we need to extend this out just a tiny bit and then we also need to manually add the points for the white part this doesn't need to be too 
precise here. And then press auto connect when you're done. So now we should have something like this. Place two keyforms on mouth open, which is this little green button. So now these are going to act as our keyframes. Let's set this to one. We're going to select our deform path edit tool. And we're going to whack some points across here. Like this. Go back to our cursor. Alright. Want to see something magical? We're going to open up our mouth here. There we go. Make sure that this tracks to here. You can also add more points after the fact and you can tweak it a little bit more. So now when you move this, oh it's gonna open! Open, close! So one thing um, also you're gonna notice is the white part is going to clip at some points. All you need to do is just grab one of the points and push it back up and that will fix it. You may also need to manipulate the points here a little if it's looking a little funky. So especially if you're new to emotes, make sure to reference, reference, reference. We're gonna look at this guy again. So we want our eyes to look down towards the notepad at some point. So we're gonna have eyes down. This is also going to be zero and one. So we're going to have our eyes pointing down. Oh, one very important step to do. We need to make sure that our eyeballs are clipped to our eye white so they don't go beyond like down, down far, right? So grab the ID from your eye white and then in your eyeball you'll see a clipping ID box. Paste this and that will clip it to your eye white. So now you'll see a uh, woo! Do the same with the other eyeball too. So we're going to have this looking down. For this side I want it to come in a little bit towards here. Well we should have the default state be a bit further up. So you'll see that this is now whoop 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 whoop. You basically gotta break it down into what motions are all going to add up to the animation. So we want a head nod too. And this is going to double up as our looking down. Actually we can get our, give ourselves a little bit of extra leeway by setting this to 30. This makes it a bit easier to manipulate the numbers later. So we're going to grab all of our parts. Since it's an emote, we can kind of cut corners a little bit. <laughs> I'm gonna call this head nod. When this is at negative, we want this to go down. We are gonna do more than just have it go down. When we're uh, going up, we actually want to rotate it just a little bit. We have to rotate it from the point of the neck. You also got to rotate this in a little bit too. So we could just leave it like this, but that's kind of boring, right? The, the face isn't actually nodding up and down. So when we hit nod upwards, we can actually move the face up a little. This is going to look really weird, but trust me. It will work out. Move this up. Move the top part down a little. That gives us a little bit more perspective. And we can do the same here. So we just pull in the middle towards the direction we're facing. And there is a bit more that you can do if you separate out the motions even more. I'm just showing you how to get started, basically, with your very first emote. What else can we add? We want to add a little bit of hair motion, I feel. Hair sway. Create deformers for our three parts of our hair. So we're gonna have bangs and then our side hairs. We're gonna have um, side hair left and right separate. And we are just going to grab each of these deformers. 
and create three keyforms on our hairsway. We'll usually have two hairsway parameters um, for a proper model, but since this is an emote, uh, we just need the one. What we're going to do, set this to 30. I mentioned this earlier, but for example, when we're at 30, we can have this going to the right. And then when it's at minus 30, we can have it going to the left. All we need to do is grab our points and make it sway over like that. And then the other way around. Let's do the same with our side. So we have our nodders, our hair, our eyes looking, and our open. So next we can move on to our notebook. And what you can do is, if you'd like to organize your parameters a bit better, you can create a new folder right down here, and we'll name this head motions. Grab all of these and just place that in our new folder. And we can grab this one, notebook motions. I do recommend keeping yourself organized because it is easy to get lost. <laughs> so next we're going to do our notebooks. Let's go ahead and set our opacity back up to 100. Let's create a new parameter for our notebook going down. Notebook down. And we're going to set this to 0, 0, and 1. So we're going to have all of our parts moving here. So let's go ahead and create notebook down. So this is going to be our motion. And you can actually use the other ones. So for example, when I have my head down. You can also do it at a greater angle, but then still use, for example, if I'm happy with it being at minus 15. The only things that are active on this deformer are the green points. So these are the only active keyforms. So don't worry about messing around with your other ones. You can have things in a position that makes it easier for you to work. So when we have our notebook down, we want this to rotate a little bit. As if she's going to write on it. And we want this to rotate a little bit. So this should be like this. We also need a pencil scribble. And we're going to set this to the minus 30 and 30. Because we want this to go back and forth. So we're going to grab our paw and pencil. Make a deformer. We're going to call this pencil scribble. And this is going to happen when the notebook is down. So I'm actually going to set this down. So that we can see it. Let's set three keyforms on our pencil scribble. Alright, let's um have a quick look at our reference again. This one goes up and down a little bit. Let's look at the other ones. How's this one? Like a little jog 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 kind of motion. You know what, we could actually separate this into two parameters here for what we're going for. So we want to have pencil move and pencil scribble. And you'll see why in just a moment. So for our scribble at minus 30, we're going to have our pen move a bit this way. And then like this. So we're kind of going like this. And we can add a little bit of extra motion if you'd like by adding a pencil deformer just on the pencil, not the hand. Pop that on your pencil scribble. And we can have this rotate just a little bit extra out of the hand. So now it's scribbling a little bit better. Yep. Okay. And then we're going to grab our pencil scribble deformer. Create a new one. We're going to call this pencil move. And make sure to click consider child keyforms. Boom. That's going to create a new one. A new deformer over our previous one. And on with this one, we're going to use this pencil move parameter. Set three keyforms. And for this one, we're just going to move our pencil across our notepad. We're mostly going to do it from this side, I think, actually. Yeah. So this, this will still work with our scribble, as you can see. It's very important that the pencil move is above the pencil scribble. Um, otherwise, it's going to cause some funky shenanigans. <laughs> Alright, now we do got to fix the neck. 
So let's um go ahead and hide our notebook again real quick. We're actually just going to make this invisible for now. We're going to grab our taller body and we can actually just add this onto our head nod. We're going to move this up with the head. But we're also going to manipulate this a little bit like we were with the head earlier. So it goes up and then down. When our head is nodding downwards, you don't actually need to move the body quite as much. Because if you, for example, uh, try facing your head down right now. It's covering part of your neck, right? Uh, let's move this down a little. I'll need to move the actual body back up some. Looks like this. Cool. Let's uh, get our notebook back and I think we'll be ready to animate.